This is a part that I just got from a customer, and they ask if we could make some resin duplicate parts. It's a standard injection molded uh, part made by a Swiss company. We're gonna make a two-part silicone mold so we can make resin parts. This is a great use case for making resin parts if you're, let's say, prototyping even a 3D printed master part. The parts that you get are a lot more durable than a 3D printed part, and you can make them virtually any color that you want. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. There's nothing particularly special about this enclosure other than I would say it's a medium size enclosure. So a little bit bigger than the tabletop stuff that I normally do. I'm gonna clean it really good with some denatured alcohol as a bunch of crud on it. And I'm gonna build a mold box. I'm gonna build this mold box out of some half inch MDF laminate um, material that I have, meaning it's laminated on both sides and has a pretty smooth surface. And so it'll lend itself really well to building a mold box. This mold box is 18 by 34 uh, by roughly 10 or 11 centimeters. Uh, you want your mold box to be nice and square. I'm going to screw this mold box together because I don't have an existing one that is the correct size. I pre-drill and countersink all the holes because it is particle board and it's basically crappy low grade material. So I have to be particularly careful so that I don't split the material. It's easily, it splits and uh, could leak silicone, which I don't want. So I screw everything together with, uh, I don't know, inch and seven eighths drywall screws. Doesn't take too long to make a mold box like this, um, but I prefer this over using some sort of a throwaway material like a foam core. I mark the sides so I know how it goes together, and then I use the laser, and this is the key to making a ceiling mold box. I cut out these keys that go around the inside of the mold box and it's just cardboard. You'll see a lot of guys that use these round dots that they use as keys to line up their mold boxes and the two halves of the molds. I don't do that at all and I use these keys that I laser cut 360 degrees and in this case the two top pieces of uh, cardboard are thicker than the two bottom layers and that's going to give me a locking mechanism. So here's a section of the part and a section of the mold and there you can see my four layers of cardboard and my mold. So this basically gives me a mold that locks onto the bottom half of the mold on the outside giving me my two pieces and a self-locking mold. So I've started to make molds like this as they line up perfect every time and I don't need to do all the thing with the keys. There are some openings on this part that normally would be made, you know, when it was injection molded with some slides and I'm gonna seal those up with some tape, some packing tape. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm preventing the silicone from going into the other side of the mold. I'm gonna use some white glue, PVA, to glue my object down to the bottom of the mold box. And this creates a seal so that no silicone gets underneath the part when I pour the silicone in there. And that's important. That way there's nothing to clean up and the PVA white glue just peels right off the mold box because I want a parting line that's super clean down at the edge of the mold box, uh, of the part, excuse me. And I'm putting in these pins here. These are merely locating pins because this is a square mold so you could easily reverse the top and the bottom when you put it together and so that's locating pins. Just to make sure I put the mold together correctly every time. Let's mix up some silicone. This is a Shore 30A silicone. So this is a little softer than I would normally use. And the only reason I'm using this soft silicone is that this is what I could get a hold of 
in short order. Normally I use a 40A uh, durometer silicone, but I didn't have any and I couldn't get any in the short amount of time for this kind of budget project. So I had to use this 30 uh, shore silicone and into the vacuum tank it goes. This is super important. You want to degas your silicone to take all the air out of the silicone before you put it into your mold uh, so that you don't get any bubbles in the silicone and that you don't have any defects in your part. You'll notice I pour the silicone in one corner and I want to let the silicone rise naturally around the part 360 degrees once it, it's risen to the top then I can pour some more in and be a little bit more uh, aggressive. You'll see the stuff that I scrape out of the container. This is where it has all the air bubbles. It's just from mixing and handling the, the silicone is where you get air bubbles. Um, we'll take it apart. The goal here is to keep the part inside the silicone. We do not want to remove the part. I mean, sometimes that happens to me and I have to take it out. But our goal here really is just to drop this part and lower it in the mold box so that we can have some walls that come up above it to make the second half. Now I'm removing that cardboard. Those are disposable parts, my locking elements. And I'm going to add a little bit of release agent. This is Vaseline that's thinned out with naphtha. And this prevents the new silicone that we are going to pour into this from sticking to the existing silicone. And this is super important. Now we're going to reassemble the mold box in the same way around the object so that we have a little bit higher walls. I'm attaching our vent holes. And these are done, uh, with their, they're cast from plastic straws, some urethane. I have kicker on a paintbrush and some super glue on the other side. And then I just attach it to the part. And the last piece was the pour sprue. And we're gonna mix some silicone to pour the other half of the mold. Again, mix it thoroughly and then mix it some more. That's my rule. Into the vacuum tank it goes to be degassed. Takes, I don't know, 10, 10 ish minutes, 10, 15 minutes, something like that for silicone. It's pretty thick, weird material. And I pour it in one spot, the same thing. I let the mold fill up. I did not have enough room in this uh, container and I needed to do a second pour. Just FYI, this mold box is about four liters. So each pour is roughly 2.2 liters of material. Once the silicone is cured overnight, it's time to disassemble. I remove the pour sprue. I remove all the little vent holes. I take out the um, mold box around it and I peel the two halves of the mold apart and I remove my master part. Let's move on to uh, adding a little bit of mold release to the molds before I assemble it. Now, normally I don't use mold release, but in this case, it's a textured part and it's pretty big and I want to make it a little bit easier for myself. I reassemble the mold with those locking halves, so I don't need any rubber bands. I don't need any weights or anything like that. I mix up the appropriate amount of resin. I add my dye and my color. Again, that's the beauty of this system, is you can dye your parts any color you want. You need to degas this resin before we put it into the actual mold. This takes a mm, minute and a half, something like that. You get all the air bubbles out, remove it from your pressure tank, and we're going to pour it into the mold. Now you'll notice I pour the resin against the side of the funnel. And this is important to reduce the amount of turbulence. You don't want to just dump it down the middle of that funnel. You're going to get air bubbles in your part. And also I find that pouring your 
resin a little bit thicker, almost letting it set up, will also reduce the amount of bubbles. So there you can see the cast part and the original. There's very, very little flash uh, on the part along that seam line on the top. I take a pair of flush cutters and I can trim off the vent holes and there's very, very little post-processing that has to happen. I need to make 10 of these units for my customer. And so I want to do as little possible uh, after I mold them uh, that I need to. There's a little bit of setup work to do, of course, when you make all these molds and everything. But you want to just pop them out of the molds. And then that's done. Here's some of the parts. And you can see probably the hardest part of this project in many ways was just getting the color right. I took a few pours to figure out the color value. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Hope you liked it. Rock on. Don't forget to follow me on social media. And you can check out some of the other videos that I have that you may like. Don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so you can be notified about any future videos that I have.